So, hello everybody. I'm Alexander Chudnovsky. I want to thank the organizers for the possibility to give this talk here. And uh, um, just a minute. I have to check. So the title of the talk, as you see, is uh, Superconducting Insulator Transition. And I'm going to present a model, uh, which is a relatively simple microscopic Hamiltonian that uh, uh, in, uh, that basically reproduces important phases which are shown here, which are typical, proper to the typical phase diagram of a high TC superconductor. The model is relatively simple, and you can see this phase diagram, which I'm going to explain in the rest, strange metal phase, superconducting phase, quantum critical rigid insulating phase, Fermi liquid, Bose metal. The work was done with in close collaboration with Alex Kamenev, and you can find it on the continent here. So the subtitle is uh, the, of this work is a phase diagram of the SYK plus U array. So this SYK plus U array, I will introduce in the rest. This is the model I will be considering and will be presenting, which leads to such a phase uh, diagram. Um, well, if I will be able. Uh -huh. So first of all, uh, <clears throat> uh, the sajdiv yakitaev model uh, attacked, attracted, uh, attracted an interest uh, from the solid state community because uh, so uh, out of many uh, uh, properties, but one of them is that uh, it, it can reproduce the strange metal behavior of the resistivity if you make an array of SYK so sajdiv yakitaev grains. The Hamiltonian of these grains was introduced in the, in the work of Balance and co-authors. You can see this. Basically, there are two pieces. Uh, this is the number of isolated grains. This is the, uh, the this part is the SYK random interaction term. R denotes the position of a grain in the array, and uh, C denotes uh, the electrons creation or annihilation operators at each side of a grain. So each side of a grain can host a spinful fermion. It's important. I'm dealing here with the fermionic version, not, not Majorana fermions, but real charged fermions. This is what I'm considering. The second part is the random tunneling between the grains from each side of one grain to any side, other side of the other grain. There are two energy scales characterizing this model, which is the variance of the random interaction in the grain, G squared or G, and the randomness of the variance of the random tunneling, T0 or T0 squared. And um, I, okay. Um, so uh, important properties of this model was, as I told already, it exhibits a linear temperature there is a dependence of resistance at, at temperatures higher than the uh, typical temperature scale T squared over J, and it exhibits also the Fermi liquid T squared dependence of the resistivity below this scale. All this was the result was obtained in the results of work of balance, which is cited here. And further, it was, was this, this work was uh, this idea was extended in a number of works. Uh, I'm so I apologize if I do not could not cite it all of them, uh, but to the theory of a Planckian matter metal. Uh, furthermore, because of the strange metal phase, is a typical part of a phase diagram of high TC superconductor, which is uh, uh, seen there. It, the, the natural desire appears to modify or extend this model in a possible minimal way, in such a way to obtain other parts of the phase diagram. First of all, superconducting phase, and possibly pseudo gap phase or other phases. Such an extension so were, were, uh, were proposed in several works and more or less all of those works in one or another way introduce effective attraction between electrons. And uh, the work I'm considering here is not an exception. We also start with the effective attraction in the, within the electrons and in the and we introduce it in the most simple form, probably most simple possible form. But this is just the local Hubbard U term, attractive Hubbard U term, which acts at each side of a given grain. As you can see, this is minus U and uh, all those C operators uh, reside at a single side of a given grain R with corresponding spin, you know, spins corresponding to the Q per, Q per pair. So the, and so we arrive at the model at the Hamiltonian, which I will be considering in the rest of the talk. And you can see this is a this is again an array uh, where R denotes the number, the position of a grain in the array. This is uh, the only modification is that in each grain there is a local attractive Hubbard interactions. First of all, what are the consequences? 
the simplest way to deal with this model is to do the mean field. The first attempt to do the mean field leads to the following phase diagram. So the, here is for the compare and for the comparison the phase diagram with of the SYK array without Hubbard's term that has only two phases, basically the Fermi liquid phase here uh, and uh, the strange metal phase that basically differ in the temperature dependence of the resistivity. As soon as you do mean field in, 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 uh, in such a way that you introduce the superconducting order parameter, effective superconductor order parameter as an anomalous averages of the on-site electrons forming a Cooper on-site local Cooper, Cooper pair, you do some mathematics and you obtain the following uh, the solutions of the mean field equations uh, lead to this phase diagram this is schematically shown here so you can send that immediately as soon as uh, to, first of all this is a t equal zero axis and uh, you can see that as soon as you turn on even infinitesimally small u you immediately obtain a finite amplitude of a superconductor order parameter yeah No, there is no geometry. I can assume, I, I don't uh, go into the, it is nearest neighboring or some geometry, which I will not enter into details because I assume the tunneling to be anyway small. And basically the whole, uh, this whole results I will be, I will be reporting uh, uh, can be obtained from the considering the only tunneling between the nearest neighbor brain in the incoherent array where the whole resistivity is determined by the tunneling between the two nearest neighbors brains. That's why. Tij is random, is random variable with zero mean, and the variance of this Tij squared is characterized by T0 squared. Yes, U is the same in every gram at each side. U is absolutely non-random here for simplicity. Um, well, so uh, what you get is the superconducting uh, phase which is basically as uh, you, you could expect it. A, an interesting point is that the, of course, there is a gap in the single particle spectrum, uh, in the spectrum of single particle fermionic excitations opening. And this gap is this time not Delta. This is due to, this is a difference between the usual uh, conventional superconductivity and this uh, superconductivity in the SYK model with random interactions. This is Delta squared divided by J. This is Delta one here which means that at small u, and of course, delta depends on u, here is delta very small, this gap is much smaller than the usual expected superconducting gap. But if this phase diagram would be the end of the story, it would be not very interesting, maybe even boring. The interesting point comes now, and this is the most important point of the whole, this is the crucial physical point of the whole talk. Uh, and the whole work is namely that those phase diagram before is not quite exact. Why? Because the uh, idea, the, the phase fluctuations of the superconducting order parameter in this model playing a very important role, and they uh, were not treated properly in the simple mean field solution, where if I turn back here, this delta was assumed to be a constant parameter without, uh, let's say, let's put it real number. Uh, equal everywhere. So which means automatically by the mean field assumption, you assume that phases are frozen as soon as the superconducting amplitude appears, which is basically conventional assumption uh, for the superconductivity. But this time, let me, be, uh, let, me be, let me now consider the phase, fluctu phase fluctuations in more details. Basically, yeah, I starting with this. So, and first of all, uh, to understand the most important result, let me first consider a single grain. Uh, here I disregard tunneling. I'm focusing on a single grain. What happens at the single grain if I introduce this Hubbard U? So basically, technically, one deals it using the field theory and makes hubbard stratonovich decoupling. And importantly, is because that the hubbard stratonovich decoupling of the U term is naturally site local because U term is site local. So that you basically introduce initially a local decoupling field for a field for each side. And this time I will make the following assumption that this local field has a constant amplitude delta, which now I can put real. However, it has also this phase factor i e to the power i phi i, whereby, uh, so if each, at each side, there is some superconducting phase, which can be, can fluctuate, can differ from one side to the other. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in all of us, 
J. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, uh, okay, I, I, I understand. I, I, I can only ask. The thing is that if you if you uh, you can do it for uh, yes, the same goes to the J terms, but basically the result is without uh, details. If you orbit U and without U, you do not get superconductivity uh, mathematically. This is so. So J terms. Uh, yeah, you so you do the same. Yeah, you do the same for the J terms also. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you comment on the gauge invariance of the theory and why these phases are not swallowed uh, due to the gauge invariance, if there is one? Uh, well, you can, uh, you can try, but uh, this will not. Uh, without going into details, you can not swallow all those phases with the gauge field. Basically, uh, I can we can go into mathematical details and uh, if further, but probably let just the answer is no, they are not. But uh, that which I will try to give in this short talk. So now, um, if I can proceed, uh, so well, uh, so now what you do, what you are doing technically, addition, uh, so formally. You again start, start start with some mean field theory. Well, you have mean field delta. This delta is the result of the solutions of the mean field equations that I showed before. But now let us consider fluctuations around this mean field. So the phase fluctuations, what they what do they do? There are two effects coming immediately into the play. One was known and one is present. Uh, one is that the phase fluctuations, even in the non-superconducting model, uh, result in the so-called, uh, one can tell, on-site charging energy, which is proper to the SYK model and independent on the Hubbard coupling. It is just the property of the SYK model itself and fermion, uh, for, for fermions that we have this uh, single particle site charging energy. This is a reaction of the fermionic model to the infinitesimal change of the chemical potential. And uh, uh, well, it was calculated before in this work, and it is approximately half of the uh, coupling of the SYK coupling strength uh, J. Uh, if you, rem uh, and immediately you understand that if you have only this coupling presence, then it, tr it uh, tries to uh, destroy the phase coherence because this is, this is basically the charging and it kinds, uh, tries to destroy coherence between the superconducting phases and eliminate superconductivity. However, there is a second term, which is an effective interaction between the phases, superconducting phases at different grains. Without going into details, I want to explain this interaction can be calculated out of this basic diagram and this diagram which is so tall are uh, imaginary times. So it's imaginary time formalism. Important is following those points are the dealt superconducting local superconducting order parameters at site I and here at the another and some another site J. And now the lines, solid lines with single arrow are normal components of the Green's functions. This bubble consists of anomalous Green's functions with uh, so, so double arrows. Uh, and those vertices are the scattering vertices due, due, uh, due to the SYK interaction to, the, to this SYKJ. So basically, it, uh, this, uh, this diagram describes the assisted scattering of a Cooper pair from a site I to a site J assisted by these SYK interactions. And one can calculate this diagram and the most important and, and obtain this result for, for, a, for a single diagram. Importantly, is this is delta squared divided by J and divided by N, which results immediately to the interaction energy. If you now sum up all those diagrams, sum up uh, the complex conjugated diagrams all together, then you obtain immediately the interaction between the uh, sides, which is minus J divided by N, and here sum over all sides from one to N, and cosine phi I minus phi J. Obviously, this term tries to synchronize the phase or free of freeze, freeze the phase the phases out uh, yeah uh, yeah but tunneling is not considered here i i this is uh, tunneling in uh, here yeah you 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 may get further corrections you may get this is the basic 
yeah they're, they're parametrically smaller you can get you can get other terms of course but this is the basic uh, the, this is the uh, basic one so, yeah. i had a similar question i mean without j this is just the stiffness the coefficient of this term and the stiffness controlled by the density of electrons superfluid electrons so but, when j goes to zero this coupling has to go to another term which is controlled by t no no so wait, wait, you can have you can have this term even in the system without uh, uh SYK interaction so what, what remains uh, sorry sorry uh, that, no, here. The stiffness of the in some other systems possibly but if I, I stick stick by this Hamiltonian and remove the SYK interaction then my Hamiltonian is just zero I, no, I mean, everything everything we have the term we have the hopping term this is probably also the question that was there but wait wait again again ah, again, again, okay. again as, I, as I told from the very beginning let me focus here I'm focusing on a single grain I disregard possibility of a tunneling to the other grain. I want to know what happens in a single isolated grain with you. What is this phase diagram without now disregarding tunneling to other grains? Uh, and so an important point in this term is that despite what I was doing is the fluctuation expansion of large and over large and theory over the mean field. The result is not a one over r, one over n correction. This is important because this result, if you this I this is uh, I intentively put here the powers of n so that you can follow the the fact that the resulting uh, proportionality is one over n, which means after multiplying n summation goes over n squared sides. So the overall total energy scales as n as it should be for the initial model, which means the fluctuations of phases is the effect of the equal strengths than as the mean field effects. The energies are proportional to N. This cannot be disregarded. This really changes the physics that you observe. And let me now, uh, uh, so, and uh, the model that you arrive at, if I some put those terms together, is called the quantum version of so-called Kuramoto model. What is the Kuramoto model? It is known as a classical model of phase synchronization. Basically, you can also consider this as a kind of a Josephson junction arrays with infinite range Josephson couplings, if you wish, because you see, so this is HI is the island, phi is the phase of the on the island, but Josephson coupling is everywhere, everywhere with everywhere, uh, everywhere, body with everybody. And let us now, uh, and this is the model uh, that uh, describes, basically should describe the phase diagram below this line. So as soon as a finite superconducting amplitude appears, the model, the effective Hamiltonian for the model of a single grain is now can, should be formulated in terms of these phases. Now, the properties of the model are the following. They, uh, this model allows exact, uh, so, uh, exact, almost exact solution. And it exhibits, the, the, and the, you see that there is, of course, the competition of charging energy and dg. And that's why, and this competition results in a quantum phase transition and change of the ground state from the phase, unsynchronized phase, uh, phase which I would call first of all, non-synchronized. It is when the charging energy dominates. And uh, phase synchronization, which in this uh, context means super, really superconducting phase with a superconducting coherence. Now, let me go into details of this phase unsynchronized phase. Basically, this is the most important point. And most important physical result is the appearance of this phase unsynchronized phase. And, and the second point is here, the following. So, what are so if uh, that uh, one can get more insight in this five phase in science unsynchronized phase, if one considers the uh, correlation function of phase exponential, and one can see that at zero temperature, the correlation function this is the, the sum of the uh, products of the phase exponentials on the side i and on some other side j, sum over, other, over, over all sides calculated in the Matsubara form formalism, and you can see the perfect pole structure of this propagator, propagator. And this pole structure means that there is a single mode, if, I, if, you now pro, if you now make analytical continuation to real frequency, frequencies, you obtain such a retarded correlation functions that has a pole structure that had a pole and the energy, which I will call epsilon one. And what is important for this energy is that this energy epsilon one, it can be calculated explicitly. E1 again is the charging, G is the coupling, this uh, um, Kuramoto coupling, which is proportional, which depends on U. It is not proportional, but it rises with U naturally. And therefore, one can see that they, and what is important for this mode? First of all, 
it is a single mode because of the pole structure. Second, this mode proliferates of diagonal long range order over the grain because this is a correlator of the phase exponentials at different sites. And the third part, uh, important point is that this mode exists in the spectrum even in the quantum disordered phase unsynchronized phase, uh, unsynchronized phase, which means that even in the quantum disordered phase, non phase is unsynchronized. The spectrum looks like the following. The ground state has non-synchronized phases, but there is in an excited state in the spectrum that bears with this long range phase coherence. One can call them in quote superconducting state. It is not superconducting state, but it is long range coherence state. Now, the, uh, in pre and this, the energy of this state diminishes and goes to zero exactly at the quantum phase transition point. Moreover, this mode is the single and only critical mode that describes, it characterizes all this uh, quantum critical uh, transition between the non-synchronized and phase-synchronized phase, uh, uh, phases. And uh, this, uh, this, basically, this is the main physical result. Now, from now on, I will just uh, outline the consequences of this result for the system and for the phase diagram. What are the consequences? First of all, one can conclude, so what is this non-synchronized phase in, in more physical terms? One can really understand, uh, one can easily understand this is an insulating phase. Why? Because in this phase, uh, finite uh, uh, superconducting order parameter suppresses one particle conductivity because of the uh, big gap in the one particle spectrum. However, this pair conductivity is also suppressed because the pairs at different sites are incoherent. So naturally, this phase at zero temperature is insulating. From the, on the other side, if I rise the temperature, I understand that if the temperature is uh, by final temperature, this state with epsilon one, which has this long range phase coherent can be thermally activated. So I can expect that thermal activation of this state should result in the increase of conductance of the system. Now, if I go to the array, of course, not within a single grain, but nevertheless, this excited state with long range phase coherent should uh, should favor the conductance of the system of the system in the channel which propagates Cooper pairs, not the single particle, but Cooper pair conductance. Now, uh, and as usual for the quantum phase transitions, above the quantum phase transition point, there is an, uh, the quantum critical uh, region opens where uh, the temperature plays the major role in the determination of the, all, the, all those quantities. So this is the phase diagram. Now this is a complete phase diagram for a single grain, not for the array. Now let me show what happens if I introduce the array. So now let us restore the tunneling. I assume that the tunneling scale is the smallest one of all energy scales. So I can I assume the possibility of treating the tunneling perturbatively everywhere. In that case, this is the comparisons of the diagram. What are what those two? This is an isolated grain. This is the array. First of all, of course, the Fermi liquid region opens. This is as usual as expected. And it was. But what is more important here? The, at this part, the, the, what changes is this right-hand part of the, of the phase diagram. What is this right-hand part? Initially, each grain was a perfect superconductor. In producing the tunneling, I obtained naturally Josephson junction array. So, I the, so, now I, so this part describes the Josephson junction array, but this time at higher temperature, because the tunneling is small, First, the temperature will exceed the effective Josephson coupling. One can calculate it. This is this Josephson energy. And then this array goes to the normal phase where, again, is, uh, where the conductance is still there, but this is the finite resistance due to the transport due to the, due to the Cooper pairs. And uh, finally, let me outline uh, the calculation, uh, the, cal the explicit calculation of the resistance. First of all, the most important regime is this insulating phase. The single party one particle conductivity is suppressed to calculate now uh, the uh, two particle conductivity first of all one should take into account the tunneling which leads to the broadening of this initially exact energy level epsilon one due to the possibility of the escape of the copper pairs in the uh, in other grain uh, this broadening can be calculated to the for the dyson equation i call this correlate phase correlator the cooper one it is of course not exact Rotation, but nevertheless, for physically, it is basically the same uh, diagram. So one can uh, calculate this Dyson equation. This part, this vertex, 
basically evaluates to the Josephson energy. The physical essence of this vertex is nothing else than the Josephson energy between the grains. And then one obtains uh, first the exact solution shows you the semicircular circular density of states, which you can, can for simplicity model just for the level broadening. And then the conductance to the conductance, the, con the, con the conductivity, pair conductivity in this case, this is a major uh, channel, is calculated. Uh, the major uh, contribution is given by the uh, Slomazov Larkin. You can, you, can, you can recognize here a Slomazov Larkin diagram. I just want to say that those uh, vertices are the tunneling amplitudes. This is the averaging over the randomness. The lower part, uh, the, all, all correlation functions or propagators in the lower part are for the grain R prime. The upper part is for some other grain R. So this is the propagation of a Q per pair from R to R prime. The result uh, depends on the, regime, uh, on the regime where you calculate this diagram. The most important result is here. If you have the regime where epsilon one, this is again, this energy of this uh, superconducting, let's say mode, much larger than it's than the broadening, you have the conductivity, which has clear thermally activated behavior, exponential e to the power minus epsilon one over t. And moreover, the activation energy depends on the distance to the phase transition. I consider exactly this point as a possibility of experimental verification, whether this model is true or not. Experimentally, you should measure the conductivity as a function of temperature, and you should find thermally active, but changing the distance from the critical point. This is another question, how experimentally to change the distance, but nevertheless, you should change the distance to the critical point and you should see that the activation energy diminishes closer to the critical point. So the mode which is activated is actually the critical mode. It is the difference because, because for example, for a single particle transport, the single particle gap remains uh, unchanged and you also can thermally activate it but this uh, channel will have this the constant activation energy. So, and then finally, if you uh, go uh, closer to the quantum critical regime, uh, then you have a power law dependence of conductivity, either T squared or T, depending on the relation between the T and the lever, uh, level broadening gamma. So I'm close to, uh, close to the end. And so finally, this is a possible, this is a possible, uh, um, typical uh, dependence of resistivity on of resistivity on temperature you, you should which you should encounter if you go along the phase diagram along this dotted line so first in this regime you have thermally activated behavior dropping down exponentially then you have part of the quantum critical regime and then it changes to the linear rise corresponding to the uh, uh, to the strange metal phase and finally, uh, uh, to the right-hand side of the diagram, I will uh, only very, very briefly. So you opt, uh, you can evaluate also the uh, the um, conductivity, uh, the resistivity in the incoherent Josephson junction array uh, using the RSCJ so-called model. The result is that the conductivity is uh, n, which is the number of channel, and it is independent of the temperature. So to conclude, uh, this is the full phase diagram I wanted to present uh, for you with a typical uh, temperature dependence of the resistivity. Important point is the following. Below this dot dashed line here, the one particle transport is suppressed and all this lower part of the diagram, the transport property in this are determined basically by the transport of Cooper pairs, bosons. And here I just want to put my conclusions and summary. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Yes, two questions. Yeah. Thanks. Very interesting. Can I just can you repeat the calculation with a when you replace Tij with some Pyrrhus factor with a magnetic field? Is it possible to do such calculations so that uh, you have a field tuned? Yeah, you have a field tuned superconductor to its later transition. Uh, no, but, uh, wait. Can you? I mean, uh, so, so for, first of all, magnetic field explicitly is not here for the very beginning. I understand, but can it be? Added? It can be. Uh, yeah, it, it can be. And but uh, uh, it can be. It, it, there, there are some pre preliminary results, but the work is in progress. But uh, yeah. 
Let me ask two quick questions. First, without hoping on the first part of your talk, mm -hmm. uh, there were dashed lines in the phase diagram. And then you said that, well, yeah, strange metal and insulator. Mm -hmm. Is it really metal insulator transition or everything is crossover as a dashed line? Uh, at finite temperature, I would rather say uh, crossover because you have at finite zero temperature, you don't have a transition. I mean, that. Ah, he, uh, well, uh, as you, the, the, yeah, this is a crossover. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. The, so the it's, answer it's is really never, never metal insulator transition. It's always crossover. And it's cross. It's all the, the, the only transition, real transition is sure. Here. sure, sure this sure. is about, but yeah. this is the, those are crossovers because you have, in terms of conductivity, at least, or resistivity, you have finite conductivity everywhere. Sure. Yeah. And second question is referring to what uh, Lara was asking uh, during your talk. Uh, suppose there is hopping, and you said it's small. Okay, let's take it some number. And at the same time, you have U. And at very small U, anything related to superconductivity is a scale of U, which is small. Why don't you have a conventional superconductivity out of Fermi liquid with large stiffness compared to TC at very small U? Because still, be, 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 because 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 still you have the char because the at finite hopping at uh, if if u is very small, then um, at finite hopping uh, you have still this charging energy proper to the to you the have stiffness EF over four pi uh, in a standard situation. So but stiffness where, goes as hopping. Uh, so yes, but this hopping is much smaller than J, which determines you the charging energy. What is J? Then? J is the uh, the uh, you should go this one uh, the 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 SYK J is always present. You the hopping is between the two SYK grains. Mm -hmm. Each SYK grain, irrespectively whether the hopping is there or not, has the charging energy. Each side involved of the SYK grain has its own charging energy. So you hope from one side, which has a charging energy to the other side, which also have the charging energy. This charging energy, if you assume the hopping is really small, then this charging energy dominates, which prevents you from being Fermi liquid, so to say. If I can rephrase in a way that probably understood your question. So usually what you put there is the compressibility of the electrons, which is controlled by the hopping, if you don't have J. So the usual way we do BCS superconductivity here, yes, the charging energy is not controlled by the electronic compressibility, but by J. And then this is fixed and it's large. This was makes the difference respect to usual uh, uh, BCS superconductor without J. At least this I is agree. What yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a quick question. So, um, if I randomize you, does this survive in some way? Well, I mean, if you randomize you, you're keeping. Is, is uh, it it, it, it survives. The choice of the model. Or... Simple, the simple question it survives, it makes the, everything. Uh, more complicated, but um, I, I, I so my 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 first my, my first so uh, first of all, uh, of course you you keep you randomize keeping uh, non-zero average, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. This, this yeah. Is it like, does look though. I mean, learning from York, it seemed that uh, things will be different than uh, than the model of this fixed U. Well. Uh, I uh, well, I don't know the exact answer. I I understand that if if you randomize, but uh, so to say, uh, make it slightly random, slightly in the sense that uh, you have large average, ever, average is larger than the width, then definitely nothing special will happen. Just just of, of corrections. If you have large randomness, huge, so that you have really large uh, regions or realizations with a repulsive view instead of attractive. I don't know the answer. Let's say so. Maybe something would happen, but I don't, uh, I cannot uh, answer definitely what, what, uh, what happens in that case. But you already have this type of summing and random Yeah, which, yeah, which probably, probably nothing, but, but I'm, uh, well, because I did not calculate it to the end, I cannot make it uh, tell you for sure. Yeah, just very briefly. Uh, oh. Continuing on those lines, um, what would happen if uh, there, instead of u, you had an average j of minus u? Uh, uh, well, uh, the thing is that 
if I introduce average J as attractive, for example, uh, it immediately brings a superconductivity into the play. Uh, however, um, the whole structure within insulator disappears. The difference is the following. J in, as such uh, is responsible already for, you can understand it in the Cooper channel as a term which proliferates the hopping of the Cooper pairs. Already formed Cooper pairs. So, so you, you, you make, if you wish, uh, so U is local. So U creates Cooper pair, but does not act as a hopping term between the Cooper pair. The, co the coping does not know about attractional repulsion. However, if you make J, then you kind of, you, you can tell about it as a global attraction between the electrons already, not at the same side effectively, but on the different sides, which gives you the superconductivity, but does not give you the insulating state. In that case, the phases are frozen together with the appearance of the uh, superconducting order parameter from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, okay, very, very, very last. Quick one. Why don't you have a zero temperature Bose metal phase? Uh, because uh, either it is insulating because five phases are disordered or it is just superconducting. Uh, it, it's just that zero temperature. It is just uh, any, any connection, any relation between the, the, the array, the Josephson array at zero temperature will be just superconducting if you... Uh, ah. Okay, I understand. I understand. The, 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 the point, this point I, I was missing. The important is that the Josephson array you arrive at has charging energy much smaller than the Josephson energy from the very beginning. Why? Because the charging energy, this is this formula, I did not explain it here. This is this, is this formula. The charging energy diminishes by n, oops, by n, where n is a large number of sites within the grain. So it is very tiny. So that, which means that this array at zero temperature is definitely in the superconducting state. Okay, I think that we have to close the session because at two o'clock we should start again. We thank again, Alex, for the maestro. And uh, let's see, be back at uh, two o'clock, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.